Hi and welcome back to Meet the Bulldog series, a series where we introduce the players of the Croatia Bulldogs team participating in the Proces League by taking a look at their best games. In this episode we are going to examine the 5 best games of the youngest Croatian Grandmaster Leon Livajic. I hope you will enjoy it. Of course, as you would expect uh, with such a strong player, throughout his career he has scored quite a few very nice victories and played some really memorable games. And the first game we are going to examine is the one played in the Budapest uh, Spring Open tournament back in 2017 when Leon was just an international master but very much one on the rise. And his opponent was another uh, very young player, a uh, talented uh, Turkish grandmaster, Sanal Vahab, who is I think the same age as Leon. We joined the game on move 15. Uh, this was the game that kind of made it, for example, to the creation newspapers and maybe even Agat Matter covered it, not sure. So this game was the one that kind of, you know, it shook some something in the chess world, at least for a little bit. So we can see that in this position, White has just played the knight to d4, uh, uncovering the attack on the queen and also uh, attacking the, the knight behind her. And... In this position, I mean, if there is not much you can do, if you move the queen somewhere, then you just like lose the lose the knight because if when you recapture, I mean, you just lose the knight in in, in many ways. So uh, or or a piece more precisely. So kind of the first move here begs to be played, but the continuation is not something that is not immediately obvious. So here, uh, Leon played a very nice na na nasty queen sacrifice, queen to g2. This is not only very pretty, but as I said, almost, almost the only move. And after, after king to d2, knight d4, this is the point. Uh, Black is discovering the attack on the king or the check on the king and also potentially eyeing the queen on d1. So it's very important that the rook is on d8 and then creating some threats against the queen. Now white is actually in some problems. Uh, they have to already be careful because, for example, if they go back king g1, then knight f3 and basically black wins material back and, and is winning. Um, if something like f3, trying to deal with this check and block it, then there is knight f3, once again uh, uncovering the attack on the queen and also still threatening a deadly discovered check by the bishop, so this is also not too, too good for white. Therefore king h3, which is played in the game, is the only move, sidestepping with the, uh, with the king. And now black plays knight to f3, uh, uncovering the attack on the queen and also placing the knight on a, on a very active square with, where it is slowly trying to encapsulate the king and create some threats. And after queen to c2, h5 was played, which is a very strong move because if black does something slow, I don't know, a6 for example, white would very much like to play g4 and then get the g3 square for the king. So h5 here prevents this or tries to fight against this g4 as we will soon see. And after queen to b2 f6, uh, white indeed did go wrong and play g4. So it has to be said that even though this uh, sacrifice, uh, the queen, sacrifice the queen is pretty, it is not by any means winning or decisive. So for example, if white played something like rook to c7, attacking the bishop and attacking the pawn, uh, black wouldn't have that much better than playing knight g5, king h4, knight f3, repeating the position. So, yes, this is like a brilliant combination, but it also featured some help of the opponent. I'm not sure if Wahab didn't want to draw here, or he simply missed the threat, uh, or maybe a combination of both. But under pressure, Sahab, uh, sorry, Sanal played g4, and this turns out to be a big blunder, because now after h4, uh, black prevents the king from ever escaping to g3 and now there are all sorts of threats working in the position associated with knight g5, rook h8 and so on. So for example, if just to illustrate a threat after some random move a3, there is already knight g5, king h4, rook h8, king g3, rook h3, king f4 and rook f3 mate. So yeah, uh, similarly, uh, may other moves don't help either, like king g2 I, I thought might be strong, but then there is this nasty move rook to d2, uh, preventing the f-pawn from moving, which is important if, if white moves the queen, queen c3, then knight g5, and you can't play f3 to block this check because of the pin. That was the whole point of playing rook to d2. And yeah, after something like e4, bishop to e4, uh, king g1, uh, rook d3, you will have to part with the queen to prevent knight h3 mate. So, yeah. Uh, this is all very very nasty. <laughs> uh, also, if you try immediately g5, you also get mated knight g5, uh, king g4, bishop f3, uh, king f4, and now there are 
many wins. We can see that this king is extremely <laughs> unsafe, and rook d5 with the threat of e5 is probably the cleanest, or with the threat of rook f5. And yeah, with, with such a king long term, it is clear that um, white can survive even though he's a queen up. So in the game, uh, white played e4. Uh, and after bishop to e4, the point is now that kind of the third rank is a little bit open, which might give some defensive resources. But the problem is that after, so still knight g5 is threatened, so g5 is now played. And after knight to g5, king g4, uh, king takes h4 is also not better because like rook h8, uh, king g4, rook h3, all sorts of mates are coming. Bishop f5 is a threat, bishop f3 is a threat, uh, and so on. So yeah, this is also not good. Uh, king g4. Uh, was played in the game, but now rook e3 came, and now the king is once again too exposed, bishop f5 is threatened, rook g8 is threatened, all the pieces are potentially participating in the attack, whereas this rook, and to a very large extent, all these pieces are unable to come to help to the king. And after something like f3, bishop f5, king to h4, that there came the final bow, knight to e4, preventing the king from escaping to g3, because after uh, black takes the knight, then there is rook h3 mate, and otherwise rook h8 is coming with an unavoidable mate and uh, therefore here white resigned. Now even though Leon is nowadays a very strong grandmasters who has beaten quite some very strong and almost world class players, uh, for example in the most recent uh, Austrian Bundesliga he beat Kirill Alexenko, a former uh, world participant in the Candidates tournament and also Alexander Dochenko, the most recent winner of the Tata Steel Challengers tournament. The following game is the following game is very noteworthy because it was maybe arguably the first time that Leon truly beat a player of such a caliber. It was played in the Croatian Cup Finals, so that's a team competition held, held every year in Croatia. And his opponent was none other than the legendary uh, uh, Ukrainian Grandmaster and you know one of the strongest players of, of the last two, two decades, basically three decades, Vasily Ivanchuk from Ukraine. So the game was played in 2018, Leon was, you know, already close to Grandmaster strength, if not Grandmaster strength, his rating was 2497, but that was still 200 lower than even Chuk. and I remember when this game happened and when this result happened, many people were, you know, amazed, impressed, and in quite some shock, because back at a time it was still a very much a big, big surprise that Leon managed to beat such an opponent. Now to be fair, uh, Leon did have some luck in this game, uh, so Ivanchuk has actually been outplaying him quite convincingly with the black pieces. However, on his last move, uh, Ivanchuk maybe relaxed a little bit, lost his guard, thought everything is winning, and he played this move, I think the knight was on c3, he played knight to d1, taking the rook on d1. And it looks, uh, you know, like black just wins an exchange, uh, because this rook is protected, if white recaptures the knight then it's all gone, but uh, this is actually a big tactical blunder because it allows a very nasty trick with knight to e6. And this is actually where Ivanchuk resigned <coughs> immediately um, because there's nothing they can do to prevent mate. So, first of all, you can't capture this rook because if rook c1, then there is queen h7. And this is a very nice construction because this knight is preventing the king from escaping via f8. And if you recapture the knight, for example, with either piece, let's say with the rook, then you lose immediately to rook c8 with the potential mate on the back rank. However, recapturing with the pawn is no better because if f takes e6, then still rook c8, king f7. And currently, you know, the material black is not that bad uh, because uh, they have two pawns and, and two extra pawns. But the problem is that the pieces are not coordinated and the king is too weak. So uh, white can simply mate with the queen f4 and then the next queen f8 and whatever, queen d8. It will be made in a few moves, king um, e7, queen f8, king d7, queen d8. <coughs> uh, oops, sorry, queen c8 is probably made, <laughs> uh, my bad. So yeah, uh, you can make an argument this was a lucky win, but I mean, it's still a remarkable feat and I think that the case when Leon managed to beat such a strong player for the very first time or one of the first times definitely deserves to be included in the list of his best games, even though if the combination was, well, not very uh, spectacular and uh, even if, the, if it happened as a consequence of a blunder by the opponent and involved some luck. Now, as I said, Nowadays, Leon is quite a strong grandmaster that has amassed quite some scalps and victories against strong opponents in his career. 
So the following game uh, was played in the 2020 uh, qualification for the Speed Chess Championship organized by Chess.com. So very serious and uh, you know very competitive event. And here Leon had the black pieces against another very strong and talented young player for the United from the United States, Jeffrey Shong, a player who was over 2700 uh, at some point, and even today he is very very close. I think his rating is around 2695. So Leon, Leon uh, even though he was much stronger in 2010, 20 than in 2018, he was still very much an under, underdog and quite considerably uh, outrated. But this was, all, I mean, it was first of all a rapid game, and second of all, I would say that uh, Leon was uh, maybe a bit underrated at the time. So we joined the game in this night end game. Uh, you can see that it's a very complicated, pos I mean, complex end game as as, as the, those usually are. So it seems at first glance that Black will be unable, uh, will be able to promote the spawn, but the pawn on f6 is hanging and the knight is always threatening to jump, like for example if you push h2, knight f1, and then uh, white would give up the knight for the pawn and capture the other pawn uh, with the king and then it would be a draw. So here after knight e3, Black needs to do something smart and find a, a, a way to, to, to win if, if possible. And here Leon found a very strong idea. First he played knight to d6. It seems a little bit crazy, because I, I mean you are just giving a pawn with check. But there is a point, uh, so you can't win without the knight's participation, so you need to bring the knight into the game. And here white played king to f6. And now in the game, Leon chose knight to c4. Uh, apparently king f3 was also winning and a little bit even cleaner, but that's only because after knight to c4, uh, which is trying to divert the knight, the computer says that knight to c4 is kind of more resistant. But from the human perspective, it doesn't matter because it is clear that this kind of endgame uh, is totally won for black, even if some technique is required. So even though king f3 doesn't allow this, uh, this, uh, this, yeah, simplification or however you want to call it, I don't think it's very relevant. And I think from the human standpoint, both moves are equally good if knight c4 is not better because it's easier to, easier to understand. So this kind of diverting tactics are very common for knight endgames. Basically, uh, yeah, black wants to force the knight to move so that the, the pawn can go through. And actually, there's not much that white can do here. If you play something like knight to f1, then king to g2. And now this knight is preventing uh, the annoying check on e3. And yeah, you either capture the knight or push the pawn. Uh, in the game, knight f5 was played, but then after king to f2, this h2 pawn was unstoppable and actually black just resigned or, or maybe, I'm not sure, maybe he played it out for a little bit, but yeah, the outcome of the game was never in doubt, white is completely winning. So yeah, once again, perhaps not the most remarkable game of all time, but a very nice performance against a very, very strong opponent. Uh, and I was, uh, when I was selecting games from, for this video, I was guided also by the rating and the identity of the opponent, uh, apart from only the moves themselves. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Leon is nowadays one of the strongest Croatian players, currently being ranked number 3 in Croatia. Now, however, this is not only on paper and on rating. In 2021, Leon participated in the Croatian National Championship and actually came in third win or winning the bronze medal, which was maybe one of the most successful tournament performances of his up to this point. And uh, on that path, uh, he scored some remarkable victories, and arguably the greatest win of the tournament happened in the very first round, where Leon faced uh, the Croatian top player and definitely one of our stronger players, if not ever, then at least in the 21st century, Grandmaster Ivan Šarić. And, uh, and we joined the game on move 45. Uh, Leon employed uh, his uh, favorite uh, variation against the King's Indian, the Makagonov, variation uh, with 5h3. Uh, he actually made the chess blue course um, on this uh, topic. You can, I, I, will, it, I will provide it in the, in the link description. So he managed to get a very favorable uh, position out of this opening and then gradually increase the advantage. And by move 45, he is completely winning. However, uh, you know, there are always some difficulties, like the rook is a little bit active uh, and uh, yeah, the knight is under the attack and so on. And here Leon made a very nice decision, very experienced decision. He decided to simplify the position or transform the position and his advantage. So here he played the move rook to c6. Uh, it is actually the strongest move, maybe not the only move, but definitely the strongest move. Uh, 
this is a very nice move because uh, at first glance it looks okay, wait, I'm just blundering a knight. But actually well I'm correctly evaluated that king to e5, which was actually played in the game, bishop to b2. Uh, now this uh, king doesn't have any squares, so black is forced to play rook to b2, and now king to b2. And here we are correctly evaluated. This endgame is totally won for white. Even though he only has one pawn and rook for the two pieces, which is nominally uh, such a material balance would be in black's favor. But you can see that these pieces are not coordinated at all. And all these pawns on a6, c7 and h6 are permanently weak. Uh, and actually in the game we won the a pawn and then promoted the on or a pawn or uh, forced black to give up the piece for the a pawn and then went on to win quite easily. This is why probably on move 45 it was better to play knight to d6, but then white plays knight to c4, and one bla one black plays rook to g2, then I can either take on a6 and or probably on d6. Uh, so yeah, it, it would have still been very, very, very much winning for white. And yeah, but this rook c6 was therefore a very ni nice simplifying decision. Once again, perhaps not the most remarkable combination of all time, but given the importance of the event and the caliber of the opponent, I thought it's nice to include it in this list. Last but not least, even though the game I'm about to show you is not an over-the-board game and probably not the most remarkable game of Leon's career, uh, since I'm a manager of Croatia Bulldogs and since th this video is made related to the Croatia Bulldogs and the Proces League, I couldn't resist the temptation of including it into this mix because it was played in the playoff stage of the 2020 Proces League qualifier, uh, where we as a team managed to <laughs> qualify for the league against all odds and cause one of the biggest surprises uh, into maybe history of the Proces League or even chess competitions because our team of four international masters um, qualified for the league by beating uh, the team of four experienced grandmasters. You, you can find uh, the article and account on how that happened on the website uh, of the Croatia Bulldogs, which will be linked below. below. But the following game was one of the most instrumental games uh, in that competition. So here Leon faced uh, the grandmaster Vasiv Durarbayevi with the black pieces. And the format of the qualifier was such that there were multiple rounds where team would play against each other. So Leon had already beaten Durarbawi twice, I think, in this in this event. Um, so and, and not without some luck. So probably when by the time this game was played, he had a lot of confidence, whereas whereas Durarbawi was probably a little bit annoyed slash uncertain. And I think this reflected uh, in the game. So let's take a look at the position. Uh, we can see that we have some sort of French structure with this pawns on d4, e5, and uh, d5 and e6. At first glance, it looks as if white is doing very well because of this control over the c-file. And also because this queen is a little bit sidetracked, blah, blah. But actually, the position is equal because as we will see, black will be able to uh, fight for the occupation of the C file and also this knight on f5 is quite a good piece exerting pressure on on d4 So here Leon first played b6 uh, Kicking the rook away and after rook c7 he played rook a to c8 and here Durabawi made a mistake Overlooking a very nice tactical resource. So what white should do here? White should play something like rook to c1 probably probably Durabawi was a little bit worried about his pawns here uh, for example, rook c7, queen c7, queen to a2. Of course, the computer says that g4, knight h6, h3, queen to b2 is very much uh, uh, okay for white because they have massive compensation for the two pawns against the king and due to this bad knight. But of course, seeing something like this in, in, in a, such an important game when your confidence is maybe not at, at the highest peak is not so easy. So Durabayevi went g4 here, hoping to get this knight to a passive square, maybe to h6. Uh, but Leon played rook to c7, queen to c7, and now this very na na nasty intermediate move, queen to e2, uh, attacking this uh, knight. And also threatening some tactics. So for example, the most logical move here would be to play king to g2, but then you have to deal with this trick knight to d4. Because after knight to d4, queen g4, black regains a pawn and, and uh, a piece with two pawns extra, it should be easily winning. Uh, so the only move here was the move queen to c3. And now black plays knight to e7, intending to play knight g6. And uh, this was the point. The, the knight doesn't retreat to h6, but to a much more active square. And after queen a3, which is the, I guess, another mistake, probably it was better to activate the rook, rook e1 or rook c1. But queen a3 was 
I'm not sure what was the purpose of this move, attacking the knight and maybe the a7 pawn, but yeah, after knight g6 you can never take this pawn because the, 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 the knight is under the attack. And after rook to e1, queen to c2 was played, another very na nasty move, threatening knight f4, knight h3, knight d3 ideas, intending to play against this pawn. So if you take pawn on a7 now, then knight f4 and knight h3 comes and it's extremely dangerous for, for white. Actually the engine gives like plus 7 for white, which is ludicrous, but yeah, there's not, it's very difficult for, for white to defend this position. Uh, in the game, Durabai we played something else, but uh, I, I'm not sure, I think queen c3 or something, but anyway, the queen ended up on a6, uh, well, on took control over the c file and went on to win the game smoothly. Uh, here, black is already better because this pawn is now just, you know, the king said is weakened with not no clear purpose, and the black's pieces are, are better placed, and this pawn is also a weakness a little bit. So, so this was a hugely important win because we won this match or won the qualifier by the narrowest of margin so every point counted, uh, counted and uh, yeah, Durabao is a very renowned and very strong grandmaster at beating him three times in, 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 a, in, in a tournament even if it's just a rapid online event is quite remarkable and I hope that Leon will continue with such good performances in the Proces League this year as well. So yeah, this brings me to the end of this edition of the Meet the Bulldogs series. If you want to check other videos from the series, feel free to do so. Uh, they, the link will be provided below. So uh, I'm also devoting a single episode to every player of our roster. If you also want to keep up to date uh, with our team and what's been going on, please check our website. All the relevant information related to the 2023 year of the Proches Week should be there. And it starts very, very shortly. Uh, if you like this video, feel free to check some of the other content, non Proches League related content on this channel as well. I would be very uh, thankful for that. And uh, yeah, uh, if not, thank you for watching this video and hope to see you sometime soon. Thanks 